this conference will now be recorded. Um, this is a session which is going to go through um, on how to tailor your OET letter um, according to the type of letter that you have. So we're going to be touching upon the three important letters which appear on your OET, which is going to be your transfer letter, your referral letter and your discharge letter. So what I've done today is I've tried to condense um, the three different types of letters and I've tried to make cheat sheets for each different letter so that you, on your OET, um, you're very comfortable in case any type of these letters do come out and you don't feel like you're out of your depth. So what tailoring means is that you, you create something or you create a letter which is tailored to your audience, okay? We have discussed the concept of audience awareness before. So audience awareness basically means knowing who your audience is and modifying your letter to suit the needs of your audience. So what the OET wants or what they're looking for on your OET exam is whether you're able to understand as to why you're writing a letter and whether you're able to modify your letter depending upon that understanding and you're able to select appropriate information and um, exclude inappropriate information depending upon your audience. So what I've tried to explain it by is a very uh, simple concept of two children who are playing with a ball. Okay, So let's just imagine that um, you are one of these children and the other person is the um, person that you're writing a letter to okay so there might be three situations the first one might be that you're passing the ball on to the other person and that ball is going to then come back to you okay so that is essentially a referral letter okay so you you have your ball and you pass it on to the other child and the child makes a little modification on it. Perhaps they write their name or they put a little star on it or some glitter on it and then they return it back to you. So that's a referral letter essentially because you are giving your patient to someone for a short period of time and then that patient is going to come back to you and they will still remain your patient. Okay. So when you're doing that, obviously what you would do is you would tell this person, OK, um, this is my uh, baseball or this is my basketball um, or this is my beach ball. Um, it looks a little dull right now. That's why I'm referring my beach ball to you so that you can put some glitter on it. OK, once they've done that, the it will come back to you. You're not able to do that modification yourself. That's why you're asking for somebody's help. Okay. Now, a discharge letter. The discharge letter, for example, if you're if you're one of these children, um, you borrowed somebody's ball. Perhaps you were, you went to play cricket for some time, and you borrowed this person's cricket ball. You took it. You played with it. Uh, perhaps it got a little scratched. Now what you're going to do is you're going to send the ball or the cricket ball back um, to the person who it originally belongs to. Remember, you won't tell them, OK, this ball is um, 10 years old. It is red in color because that's theirs. They already know everything about it. What you would definitely need to tell them, um, we played for uh, we played with the cricket ball for about four hours and unfortunately it's got a little scratched. So this is a discharge letter. You're only going to tell them about the things which happened when the cricket ball wasn't with that person. OK, so you select your content in that way. Now, the third type of letter or the third type of scenario would be um, you, you had this cricket ball, but now um, you've stopped playing cricket and you're transferring it to someone else or you're giving the ball to someone else. You would need to tell them everything now. You would need to tell them, 
I bought um, this cricket ball about um, three years ago. Um, it's a Costco ball. Um, it's it's a little scratched, but it helps spin the ball quite well. So you'll have to tell them everything because they're now the new owner of it. Okay, so that's your discharge letter that your patient is going from being your patient to somebody else's patient, and that's why you need to tell them everything. So this is a simple concept and a very very long story as to how I try to explain the concept of three different types of letters on your OET. We'll discuss it in detail and try and apply these concepts to um, our subsequent um, session. So if you've understood that concept, guys, just type in yes, and then we can move on. Excellent. So that's the concept of tailoring and the ball. Diksha has just asked me to repeat the transfer and discharge type. Okay. So Diksha, a discharge is that you, you've borrowed a ball from somebody. It's a cricket ball that you borrowed for, from them. And you went to play with the ball. Um, outside and then you played cricket for about uh, three hours and unfortunately during that time uh, the scene from the cricket ball started coming off now you're going to be discharging this ball or you're going to be giving this ball back to the person who actually owns it this time you'll have to tell them that this um, we played with the ball for three hours and it has gotten scratched OK, so this is similar to what a discharge letter is. OK, so you're going to be telling the person who originally owns the ball about new things which happened when they didn't have it. OK, I tried and explain these things in detail in my next slide. Let's try and do that. So if you want to identify your type of letter, your transfer letter is when you're transferring your patient into someone else's care, okay? So you owned this, you had this patient. Now this patient is going to become someone else's patient. So this patient is getting transferred from your care to somebody else's care. Remember, because this patient is getting transferred, they're not going to come back to you, okay? That was the third example when you had a cricket ball and you stopped playing cricket and that's why you gave the ball to your sister or your brother so that they can play with it. Now, this cricket ball isn't going to remain yours anymore. Referral letter. Referral letter is when the patient is being referred to a specialist for referral about something specific. The patient's overall care is still yours. So that was the case when you gave the ball to your friend um, so that they can put a little bit of color on it or they can paint it or put some sparkles on it. The ball still remains yours, but the patient's overall care is still yours, but you did refer it to someone else to provide some specialist care. The discharge letter is that your patient is in your care for something or was in your care for something. You were responsible for the care of the patient during that time, but you aren't the patient's regular care. So you've admitted this patient in a hospital or in your nursing home for a short period of time. The patient was your patient in that short period of time, but now they're getting, they're getting to go back to their original care. So that was the case where you borrowed a, patient, uh, a person's uh, cricket ball for some time. You went outside, you played with it, and it was your cricket ball at that time. 
but now you have to return it to their original owner. And what's important is that you tell them what happened when you took their cricket ball out. Okay. So those are three examples as to how we can understand the three different types of letters on the OAT writing. So Diksha, if you've understood it, uh, please type in yes. And And then we'll move on. Vijay, if you've understood, please type in yes, and then we can move on. Ruhi, this is for both nurses and doctors. Excellent. So we've understood that concept now, and we're going to apply it on a future OET test. So you should know by now, um, if you don't know, then it's all right. I'll tell you about it. On your OET, you're basically assessed on two criteria, two main criteria when you're writing your actual letter or when you're selecting information, which is content and clarity. The content means that when you're given the case note, you're able to select the information which is important for the person that you're writing a letter to to, to do their job. Okay. Uh, so similar to what we discussed before in a transfer letter, because the patient's overall care is going to someone else. That's why you're going to include all information. The, the discharge letter, it's going to include only the information about your care or when the patient was with you the regular carer needs to know what exactly happened with their patient. A referral letter will need information needed for specialist opinion or care. OK, so let's just try and repeat that concept again for people who haven't understood. Transfer letter is when you're transferring your patient to someone else's care. Examples of this which appear on your OAT are sometimes you get nurses, you might get letters where you're supposed to transfer a patient from your community health center to another community health centers. That does appear sometimes. Um, it can be when a patient is getting transferred from a residential care home to a nursing home and now they'll become from a residential care home resident to a nursing home resident the patient isn't going to come back to you the responsibility of the patient's care is going to go to the nursing home that's why it's a transfer letter another type of transfer letter might be when a patient is going from a small hospital which doesn't have a specialist center to a specialized hospital like a neurosurgical hospital or a cardiology or tertiary center and the patient isn't going to go back to their original hospital, that's also a type of transfer letter which appears. Mostly on your OET, they will tell you about the type of letter that it is. So they'll specify this is a transfer letter, this is a referral letter, this is a discharge letter. You just need to understand as to what information to include accordingly. The referral letter appears in the form of surgical referrals, um, which appear too many times on your OET. So you'll have a GP writing a referral letter to a specialist surgeon or a specialist neurologist, or it might be to a specialist nurse. It can be to a cardiac rehab nurse. It can be to a physiotherapist. So that will be just for that specific thing. You're sending that patient to the other person, and that's why it will be a referral letter. A discharge letter will be that the patient is admitted in the hospital for five days and you were taking care of the patient during that time. And now the patient is going back to their regular GP. This appears for doctors as well as nurses. You will get a discharge letter um, as a doctor where you will have to probably talk about all of the hospital admission, the treatment changes which were made, any complications that you saw. And for nurses, they might even touch on things like social um, history or care needs. 
and you need to mention everything when you're discharging the patient back into their regular GP's care. So very, very important, guys, that we understand this concept because this is the main failing point that we found for students um, after the fact of just basic uh, language. So people usually fail because of their language. And the second thing that they fail is because they're not able to differentiate as to what to write in a letter and what to not write in the letter. Speaking about what to not write on this letter. That's what's called clarity. So on the official OET criteria, you do have points for clarity, whether you're able to include information which is um, important, that's your content, and whether you're able to exclude or you're able to cut down points which are given on your case notes, and you have points for that as well. So this is called clarity. Now, what information should we exclude in a discharge letter? Now, a discharge letter is a letter which is back to a person's regular care. So probably they know more about the patient's care than you do. So mentioning things like past medical history, especially when it isn't relative or relevant to this patient's admission, is going to cut down your marks on clarity what i would say is that's something that i always advise my students because they struggle with the fact that they aren't writing the patient's past medical history in a discharge letter because as doctors or nurses we've always been told that you write the history presenting illness and then you write the complete past medical history for a person what i would do is mention only the past medical history which is relevant to this patient's admission if you're confused, which can happen sometimes, for example, the patient comes with an infection and they have diabetes in the past, you might get confused whether or not this is included um, or this is relevant or not. Then you can write that as you may already know, this patient has a history of diabetes. That's it. Okay. You don't need to go into details of their diabetes, especially if you've not treated it or you've not been concerned with it during this admission. Your discharge letter, your focus should be only and only on the hospital admission which took place and what happened during this hospital admission. Everything else is less important. Referral letter. You need to only include information which is important for the for the person that you're referring this letter to to perform the appropriate action, including things like irrelevant information, especially social history, which isn't that important, um, especially when um, you've got benign social history like them having alcohol socially or having one cigarette in one month or they being a member of this um, society, those things aren't important. That's why you're going to cut out all of that. So that's going to be your irrelevant or non-specialist information. So that will be your focus on your referral letter. It gets a little bit difficult on transfer letter because obviously you want to tell the person that you're writing to every single thing about this patient because it's going to be their patient now. So what I advise for transfer letter is that uh, you include, uh, you exclude non-relevant social history and negative history. So any negative complaints, um, you exclude them or this patient didn't have a cup. So don't mention that they didn't have a cup. It, it's not really important. Do not include things like um, this patient sometimes eats a burger or just irrelevant things which don't, which aren't really medically or socially relevant. You should exclude that on your transfer letter. All right. So guys, if you've understood all of these concepts, it's very, very important that you understand everything. We'll go very, very slowly today. We'll cover just the basics today. If you've understood this, 
please type in yes and then we can move on. Excellent. Now we're going to move on to what I always do. I try to make your life easy by giving you some cheat sheet or some cheat sentences which you can apply to each kind of letter that you have. I've tried to today differentiate between the types of letters and I've tried to create introductions which are specific to each type of letter. And we'll start with the transfer letter. Now, how would you introduce your uh, the fact that this is a transfer letter? You can write sentences like, guys, please take a screenshot of this or please note this down because this is going to be very, very useful um, when you get very nervous on your OET. If you have your set um, sentences available, then that should make your life easier. OK, so how would you introduce yourself on your transfer letter? You would write specifically, guys, very, very important on your OET. You have points for purpose. OK, uh, like format, you have points for purpose and they're specifically looking at whether you're able to um, have a specific purpose and whether the reader is able to get a quick sense of what you're writing about uh, very, very quickly. So you would write, I am writing this letter to transfer this patient into your care now. You can write that I'm writing to transfer this patient to your care as well. It's not wrong, but uh, it's better to write. I am writing this letter to transfer this patient into your care. Your help regarding to the patient's continued care would be highly appreciated. Remember this first line, it has got a mistake in it. If you guys can tell me what the mistake is, then you'll have bonus points. This is a very, very important point that we need to cover. If you guys, if you can see the first sentence, there is a mistake in it. And it's very important, especially when you're writing transfer or referral letters. So Hema was very, very fast. She's written with very, very important point, guys. When you're writing, lots of people make this mistake you have to write your help regarding the patient's continued care or regarding this patient's continued care or you write your help with regards to this patient's continued care would be highly appreciated so i'll write that down with regards to this patient's continued care or it would be regarding this patient's continued care. So you need to uh, make sure that you don't make that mistake on your exam. Moving on. So Imran has asked, should we write the drugs which are not related with the specialty we're referring to? So um, with regards to drugs, Imran, it sometimes gets a bit difficult because um, then you're, you're starting to use a lot of medical knowledge. Um, what I would advise you to do is if you're talking about drugs, I would mention all of them. I would exclude history, which is not relevant to the speciality. For example, if you're writing a letter to a neurosurgeon, you won't include um, information about a patient's uh, respiratory infections. Um, you would definitely include um, information about a patient's neurological problems. So that's, that's what we're trying to differentiate. So history you can do separately. So you just mentioned the neurological history or just any surgical history. You should um, definitely mention um, the drugs, especially if you've changed some drugs with regards to the patient. SD has very rightly said, 
um, if any medication is added after visit or in the uh, hospital, ST is extremely important when you're writing a discharge letter that you include new medications, new treatments and discharge plans, okay? Sometimes, um, you know, this does happen in the hospital and in real life as well. Um, when you're writing discharge letters and you make changes to a patient's medications, uh, sometimes what can happen is you don't include all of the new medications a patient has been put on. And then the GP doesn't know that's what that this new medication has been going on and perhaps the patient doesn't know as well. So that's going to be a serious lapse of patient care and the patient might not receive the treatment that you've tried to work so hard in the hospital to provide this patient with. And in your OAT, that's going to bring down your marks. So very, very important that you include your new medications and new diagnosis. Reba has asked, when should we include hypertension, diabetes history, alcohol and smoking history? So Reba, if you're writing a discharge letter and the patient was admitted to your hospital with a chest infection and they've got um, well-controlled hypertension and well-controlled diabetes, um, if they've got a history of uh, drinking about one bottle of alcohol in one month, and when if they smoke about one cigarette every month, then I would include only hypertension and diabetes. And the way that I would include it in a discharge um, is that I would say, as you already know, uh, Mr. Johnson has a history of hypertension and diabetes. That's it. SD has asked in referral letter also. So when you're referring a patient uh, to someone SD, um, just include what medications that they're on. I would say that as a rule, include all medications because all medications are important to the specialist. You never know. Um, and this becomes extremely medical, okay? Now I'm going to become um, a doctor again instead of an English teacher. Um, all medications can have interactions with specialist treatment that they might do. So you should definitely include all the medications that the patient is on, on your OAT as well as in real life. SD has asked when the patient is being discharged or transferred to their home SD. Remember, you transfer into their care or to their home, never in their home. What will we write? You still need to include medications that the patient is on because they might have to take the medications at home and then it becomes important. All right. So you can see that lots of um, confusion with regards to the types of letters and what to include and what not to include. So definitely guys, ask me as many questions as you want. After this, I want every one of my students to be very, very clear about the types of letter on OAT and you should score full marks on your content and clarity. So very important that you ask as many questions as you want. So the first sentence was finish. It is, I am writing this letter to refer this patient into your care. Your help with regards to this patient. It's not regarding, it's regards, like Hema said, reg with regards to this patient, continued care would be highly appreciated. Another way that we can write this, Benish, can be, thank you for seeing Mr. George Nada Fortune, a 46-year-old gentleman. See, guys, how I've written 46-year-old gentleman? That's the way you write 46-year-old on the OAT because that's something that the official OAT site has told us. I'm repeating this again. Some academies, they are teaching you to put in a subject line and then 
the subject of the patient's um, transfer or referral or whatever you want to do, that is completely wrong. That should not be included whatsoever on your OET letter. We're going to follow the rules that OET has given us. All right. So Ruhi has asked, so we write in the letter whatever's mentioned in the question or do we use our own knowledge? Ruhi, remember on your OET letter, you've got a word limit. If you start including things which are not on your case notes, it's highly likely that you're going to miss out on the points that they're looking for. So they're looking for you to write a clear purpose. They're looking for you to include all the information needed by the, uh, by the person that you're referring the, uh, your patient to. So if you include your own knowledge, they will cut your marks. So please guys, I know you're very good doctors, you're very good nurses, Please do not experiment and write about your medical knowledge. Manjula, no, never write subject. Okay. Yes, Ruhi, just mention the drugs um, that the patient is on and that's it. Don't, say, uh, don't write. So what you've written is, I mean drugs and all that we use, only whatever's mentioned. So you write only whatever's mentioned and that's it okay another way of introducing your transfer letter i am writing this letter to inform you regarding mr fortune's imminent transfer into your esteemed care mr fortune is being transferred to your neurosurgical department due to his ongoing medical needs one grammar point, guys, you transfer somebody into their care, but you transfer to their department, okay? So in the first instance, I would say, I am transferring this patient into your care, but he's being transferred to your neurosurgical department. So there's a difference between into and to. So guys, please type in yes if you've understood the difference between why we've used into and why we've used to, and then we can move on. So Vija has asked, will you repeat the age in purpose if you have written it in your regarding patient name and age? Vija, it doesn't matter. Whatever suits you, you can do so. Okay, so SD has asked again. So guys, this is a common grammar mistake that we do. Um, we write into um, when we're transferring somebody into care. So it's because the care is a large thing. Um, so how can we imagine a care? So um, if you imagine your mother, okay, your mother cares about you then she's going to take you into her arms, okay? And that's why we write transfer into your care because into is a circle that the patient is going to go into or a protective border that the patient is going to go into. So it's like an area. Mr. Fortune is being transferred to your department so the department is a place that the person is going to and you go to a place and that's why in the first instance you write i am writing to transfer the patient into your care so the circle of care okay so the patient is going to be going into or inside that circle so we write into your esteemed care and in the second case, because they're going to a place or going to a department, that's why you write, Mr. Fortune is being transferred to your neurosurgical department due to his ongoing medical needs. So SD and Manjula, if you've understood that, please type in yes. 
तो एस डी डजेंट मीन फॉर अ पर्सन इट मीन्स इन टू द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ द पर्सन केयरिंग फॉर देम सो दैट्स वाई इट्स इन टू एक्सेलेंट सो गुड जॉब गाइज नाउ वीव अंडरस्टूड दैट वे गोइंग टू मूव ऑन you can also write so in your transfer letter you can sometimes have a provisional diagnosis guys remember when you're writing referral letters and when you're writing transfer letters there is a reason why you're transferring this patient because you don't know everything about them so your diagnosis will always be a probable diagnosis okay so vijay has asked but you use to your esteemed ken second paragraph so which are you can in, you can use both of them you can use into your care or to your care but um you cannot write into your neurosurgical department that's the concept that we were trying to understand but if you want to choose in between using into or to i would prefer into because it shows a higher grammar level okay so on your oet you guys want to show off you want to show off everybody that you've got very good english vija and that's why you write into all right so i was talking about probable diagnosis guys remember um that you don't know everything about your patient and that's why they're going to someone else that's why it's very important that you don't say things like this patient has cord equina or this patient has cancer okay you always write that they have signs and symptoms suggestive of probable cord equina or spinal cord compression okay so you have to be respectful to the specialist and their knowledge and that's why always write my provisional diagnosis for this patient is cord equina or you can write my patient has signs and symptoms suggestive of probable cord equina okay so if you've understood that concept of uh, provisional diagnosis please type in yes if you haven't understood this guys i've touched upon this in our previous session i think it was the last to last session when i talked about writing surgical referrals and how it was very very important that you are respectful of the fact that you need their help and that's why you're giving them a provisional diagnosis excellent then mr fortune would need continued support for his ongoing care needs whilst at your nursing home so another grammar point whilst so whilst means in the duration that he is at your nursing home or while he is at nursing home but it's a complicated word and we want to show off our grammar in front of oet or our vocabulary in front of oet so a very good sentence that we can write is mr fortune would need continued support for his ongoing care needs whilst at your nursing home or you can write Mr Fortune would need continued monitoring of his medical and social needs with your practice okay so when somebody is being monitored a good way to write that is with your practice because monitoring is side by side of them being followed up so writing with your practice is a very good method okay if you have understood the points about transfer letter and how we would introduce our transfer letter please type in yes and then we can move on excellent now we're going to move on to our referral letter or our referral letter cheat sheet how do we introduce our subject on a referral letter you would always thank the person that you're referring to so you will write thank you for seeing mr wilson 
this pleasant 46 year old gentleman is being referred so look at that tense we're going to discuss it further is being referred to you for your expert opinion regarding the possible diagnosis of dash okay so if you recognize the mistake in first line please type in yes and there are points for the fastest answer excellent so mmi has said there is no u and that is fine excellent so everybody's paying attention i'm very happy um another way of writing this is thank you for accepting the referral for mr wilson mr wilson would highly benefit from your expert evaluation and care with regards to his ongoing medical and social needs guys you can write in regards to you can write with regards to but i would prefer with regards to um i mean both are fine if you write any of them excellent again referral letter always a provisional diagnosis mr wilson has signs and symptoms suggestive of dash however your expert opinion would be highly appreciated so you're being very respectful to your audience you're saying that he does have signs and symptoms which might be this but still it's the person's expert opinion which you want so you sound very nice and polite on paper another way that we can write this is important for nurses you, you, you get a lot of these uh, referrals for dementia patients um you can write mr smith had probable mild to moderate dementia related to his parkinson's he would greatly benefit from a referral to your memory clinic service or you can write something like miss johnson has been recently diagnosed with breast cancer she would therefore need follow up at your esteemed specialist breast cancer clinic so guys you can take a screenshot of this as to how we write provisional diagnosis and how we refer a patient um, to um, a specialist but we'll upload this on youtube as well okay so if you've understood um, how we introduce ourselves on a referral letter please type in yes and then we can move on okay so seema has given us a very good sentence she's written i am writing to request a review for mr query with mcquery with symptoms and preliminary investigation suggestive of respiratory difficulties for specialist assessment and management excellent seema a small thing that you can do you can write for your specialist assessment and management slightly better makes it a bit more clear as to why you're writing this letter but very good letter or very good sentence okay we're going to move on to our discharge letter and how we would introduce the discharge letter thank you for accepting mr wilson back into your care because they've come back to the person so you're writing thank you for accepting mr wilson back into your care mr johnson is being discharged today following his recent admission at our hospital the two different people but we're thanking the person you can write thank you for seeing miss june fortune a 46 year old lady she's being discharged back to your esteemed care so again in two and two when writing about care i am writing this letter to inform you regarding misfortunes imminent discharge back into your esteemed care 
or you can just write, which I don't really like because it's not that polite. You can write, Miss Fortune is being discharged today back to your practice. So you can use all of these sentences. You can cut, copy, paste and use these sentences when you're introducing your letter as a discharge letter. Guys, you can take a screenshot of this and then we'll move on. All right, so ST has asked if we're discharging a patient to home, then how can we write it? So what you can say is Miss June Fortune is being discharged home, full stop. She would need follow up with your practice with regards to whatever the care is needed. So you never write ST, you never write discharge to home, you write discharged home. So how would I write it? Miss June is being discharged home today after a short or long hospital admission. Okay, should be today. So SD, remember the grammar point that they'll check is whether you're writing discharged home. So no to when you're discharged home. Um, when you're going back to a hospital, then you write this patient is getting discharged to the nursing home or to her nursing home. But when it's just home, then it's discharged home. Okay, SD, if you've understood that, please type in yes and then we'll move on to the next part. Ruhi has asked, can we write hospitalization? Ruhi, I would prefer to write hospital admission, but if you write hospitalization, you won't really be harmed. Okay, moving on. But Ruhi, when you're writing hospitalization, uh, you shouldn't really write. Uh, so you would write, Miss June is being discharged home today after a sh after hospitalization sounds a bit weird i would rather prefer that you write after a short hospital admission or after a hospital admission okay now very important the discharge letter always has to conclude because this patient is no longer going to be your patient so you're going to write due to her new diagnosis she has been started on so you would talk about the treatments that you've done and you would definitely need to write, she would need continuation of her care in the community. Or you can write, during the course of hospital admission, Miss Fortune was started on DASH. She has now been prescribed DASH. And then you would conclude by saying, she would need monitoring of her compliance in the community. So you always have to tell them as to what the follow-up plan is, especially when it's a discharge letter. The reason is that the patient was with you because they had care needs which needed a hospital admission or they needed your perhaps expert opinion and you did something for this patient. Now this you are not going to see this patient anymore. They're going to go back to their regular care who might not be that experienced with dealing with such kind of situations. So you definitely need to tell them that I have done this, I have prescribed this patient this, this medication needs to be taken regularly, or I have told this patient to check his blood pressure uh, regularly at home. This needs to be checked by you because now you have stopped caring for this. You haven't stopped caring for this patient, but you've stopped taking care of this patient. So to ensure continued care, they need to your um, they need to know what you've done and what you want to be uh, want to get done for your patient. Binish has written she need your continuous care from this point on. Binish, you need to write she needs 
so never she need it should be she needs your continued care okay it's continued because it's continued okay because you were one and then the patient the other doctor continues it okay so that's continued ed not continuous because continuous means that every single day the person has to take care of this patient they need to continue the care but they don't need to provide continuous care okay so binish if you understood that please type in yes excellent all right so very good audience today all right so that was the end of our small session on the types of letters on your oet um, what I'll do is I'll try and do all of these in detail in specific lectures because I know lots of people have problems with this. So I'll do one session just for discharge letter, just for transfer letter, just for referral letter so that our concepts are further clarified and crystal clear, especially uh, because the exam is starting again now. Guys, make sure that you visit our channel www.teacheracademy.com and enroll for our writing and speaking checks. You can also enroll for our group discount by texting the number on the screen or you can mail us on teacheracademy at gmail.com. Um, guys, if you have any questions, just type in uh, the chat window. Sima has asked I'm, uh, if she can write, I am writing to update you regarding Miss Priestley, who is being discharged following an unsuccessful treatment, okay? Because it was one unsuccessful treatment, Sima, so you have to write following an unsuccessful treatment of her acute myocardial infarction. Please contact if she re-experiences shortness of breath and chest pain. That's fine, just the an. Yasir, if you go to our YouTube channel, Teacher Academy, and start watching videos and practicing, um, then you should be able to um, start um, getting a sense of what happens on OET writing. So go to our channel, Teacher Academy, um, on YouTube and start watching videos. And you can also enroll for our writing check. Okay, Binish um, has asked to share the screen of transfer and referral letter. Binish will be uploading all of this on YouTube, but I can show you the transfer letter. That's your transfer letter. If you want to take a screenshot, guys. That is your transfer letter introduction. In case people want to take screenshots. And if somebody wants to take a screenshot of the referral letter, that's there. And that's the second referral letter. So thank you guys for joining us. I hope you guys keep practicing and you um, keep safe. And um, guys, good luck.